OK, so let's look back at that performance last night with a man that's played in the semi-final for Chelsea. Also, 2000 FA Cup winner with Chelsea 2. It's Mario Melko. Good morning. Good morning, Mario. How are you good. this morning? Good morning, people. I'm very good. Thank you. <sighs> Excellent, Mario. That game last night, it was one of these situations, my friend, where before the game, you would have thought it was a great result. And it still is a good result, but it could have been more. Yeah, I totally agree. If you looked at the game, the way they started, like the first couple of minutes, you could see that Real Madrid was kind of like feeling comfortable and Chelsea was just looking to settle in. But at the moment when they took over, you could just see that this was their game. And I felt like uh, the opportunities that they had right before Pulisic scored the goal, of course, you could just see that this was Chelsea's game. And then, you know, they, they kept, you know, the half chances. I mean, like Werner had the, uh, the possibility to score a goal. And then just the calmness that Pulisic had. If you see the way Rudiger plays, plays the ball over the top and he controls it and brings it in, just how relaxed. I almost thought I was watching Ellie McCoy just coming <laughs> in the box and just sliding there with it. I was like, Ellie, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Mario, I, I would never have got it. That is what I felt. I would never have got it over the top, mate. It was too quick for me. But it was, it was, it was the, it was the perfect start for Chelsea. I've got to say, and you touched on it there, and we've been talking about it. Werner had a brilliant chance to score just before Pulisic put them ahead. We've been discussing: was it a bad miss or was it a great save from Courtois? I, I, I think it was more like an, uh, uh, your reaction, you know? You, you know yourself. If you sometimes you stand in front of a goalkeeper and he just makes that right there, uh, you know, reaction, and then you, he touches it. But come on, you're a top striker. You need to get that moment. It has to be yours. It yeah. does not matter how great the goalkeeper is. And look, <laughs> I am one of the guys. I, I was never, you know, a striker of in that position all the time. But if you are my striker and you don't score that, I get upset. Yeah, we were having this discussion earlier on because it's hard, isn't it? Because you don't want to be harsh on, on Timo Werner at all because I watch him in his post-match interviews and, and you can feel the pain that he's going through and he, and he wants to try and be better, doesn't he? He wants to be scoring these goals and have a bit more confidence. But you can't just buy confidence, can you? No, but this is football, guys. You know, like <laughs> when you play for Chelsea, you make that decision to go there. They're going to expect certain things from you. Because the other thing that he brought to the team is what no one else can bring. If you look the way Chelsea was playing, look how one man can keep the whole back line busy. And that is Warner and his pace. Because they were always worried about him in the moment when, when they were pressing uh, a rail. And you could just see the reaction. Look how many times Kante uh, became free in the middle of the park. Because they were so worried about uh, Werner that they couldn't press all the way through all the defenders. So sometimes Kante slipped through it, but then yeah, it just comes like that. You know, look, I know it's sad for him because I want him to score all the time and I want him to do well. But and I don't, I don't think that he will get it. That it will take a long time for him to get it right. But just at the moment when he doesn't get it, we just have to call it. That's just how football works. Mario, I was going to ask you, mate. Looking at it, taking a step back and looking at it, Chelsea could be on the brink of a quite amazing season, really. When you think about it, a Champions League, we've got a great chance, an opportunity to obviously reach the final. Could be an F, they could win the FA Cup and finish in the top four. I would suggest that would be an unbelievable season. That could be an amazing season. If you see where they come from, we, we have to remember, you understand, I was actually sitting with you two when they had the ban, and it was like, you know, they couldn't buy anybody. Yeah, they were, right. We were talking about that, you understand? And then look how Frank turned things around and made it to a great season. Next thing you know, the the, the glitchy start came in and then, uh, you know, they, they changed Frank uh, and brought in Tuchel. And the way he kept on winning, 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 they, they couldn't lo win a game. Uh, like, they kept on winning every game, but they couldn't lose anymore. And then now they're in that situation, which you just said. If they push it all the way, win the cup, and then they get to the Champions League final, I, I honestly believe that if they get to the Champions League final and they win those two, I don't think there's a lot of people that are going to disagree and saying like, what a great performance from this team overall. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask you about this second leg? Because me and Ali, again, we were talking about this this morning, saying on paper before the game, you'd have gone, oh yeah, I'll take a 1-1 draw away from home. But then because of the chances that they missed and Thomas Tuchel even said, you know, we should have put it to bed at halftime, but we didn't. How will they be feeling going into the second leg? And are you confident? Are you confident in their win? Yeah, I'm, I'm confident in the sense of if Chelsea gets the same discipline, why I think they, they would and should is because 
Real Madrid is still the favorite in this tie. Why? Because of the experience and of the, the situation mm -hmm. Zidane has built his team. You see at the middle of the park, you could see the, you know, the way Cruz was playing and Modric the, and, and Casemiro. Look how much freedom those three guys have in the middle of the park because it was Zidane's position. I played myself against Zidane and the way he was so smart, all those three guys are so intelligent that they can move around and then pick up a position and still fill the gap where they're supposed to be. And I think, mm -hmm. so if, if Chelsea plays well and mastermind those three guys in the middle of the park, the way Jorginho and Conte did actually, exactly, I think there could be a really interesting game and I feel like Chelsea can win this one. Can I ask you both this question? In terms of, of, of Thomas Tuchel setting a side up, do you think that it's easier for him to set a side up not to lose rather than to go to win? <sighs> The most dangerous part, Laura, I'm telling you, don't ever play that you don't want to lose. Because as soon as you play like that, you will lose. <laughs> I think he should set a team up, you understand, that, that has the possibility to win. And if you draw the game and it becomes a normal game, okay, you take that. But you never want to go. I mean, I would never want to go in a game. I never... I, Look, coming from a team like Ajax, we never had that as a, as a kid yeah. when I grew up, like nine years old when I joined them. You play to draw. No, you don't do that. You play to win. Mm. Absolutely. I, don't know what feels. I look at I look at Thomas Tuchel's team. They might it might set them up and be difficult to beat, but that's yeah. he, he sets mm. them up to win the game. They might be difficult to beat, but he clearly sets them up to win the game. Mario, I want to ask you with a great night last night. Tonight, another unbelievable game. <laughs> City PSG. Talk to me. What are you thinking? Oh my God! This is football at its best, guys. I, not... Listen, this is football for the people that you know. If you have any doubts, if you're not sure about football, you better fall in love with football now because this is the best at the best. Yeah. You know, when you look watching a city against PSG, look at the forwards that 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 PSG already had. You don't know what is Neymar is going to do, what is Mbappe is going to do. Then you're going to on the other side. Everybody talks about Foden. You understand? Is he going to start? He now got the upper hand. Uh, you know, uh, Pep said. He's now start, starting in front of, hey, come on, guys. If you start in front of Sterling after he had such a great season and then you got now the upper hand and saying, like, you are going to be picked, come on. Guys. Now we're watching the two best sides are facing each other and playing beautiful football. Oh, my God. I remember Potichino saying, like, no, don't worry. This is not about the two managers. Guys, wake up. This is going to be a tactical game at its best. And the one that makes the mistake is the one that's losing their game. Cool, you made me well excited for that, Mario. Oh, I know. Can't Listen, we? I've got to say, I, I thought the two games, PSG against Bayern Munich, I thought they were fantastic, Mario. I really did. I loved them. But I think this could be better. Yeah, because you know why? Because you're going to have two teams. They cannot play with the game. Like, Laura asked us a question, like, are you going to play for a draw? Both cannot play for the draw. That's why I'm expecting a game that two teams are going to go at each other and play football in the way of finding the pockets. Look, it's always going to be hard in the sense of like, if they outplay each other tactically, then it's going to be, could be a little a boring game, but I don't expect that because I expect two teams, they want to win mm -hmm. and will do whatever it takes to do that. Mario, one, one name, who goes through from this tie across the two legs? Oh my God, why you do this to me? <laughs> I, I, I don't expect you to do that. Oh my God. Hey, look, look. Hey, I'm an Mbappe fan. I'm sorry for everybody that's, that, you know, like, look, I, I love your country. You know how I think about England. But Mbappe, oh my God, guys, come on. If you, can, if you don't love football, you don't love him. This kid, what is he, 22 years old? Already won what Ellie and I wanted to win our whole life. We played football with the, the World Cup. And this guy won it already, so yes, I'm going for PSG, I'm sorry. Mario, sorry, brilliant to hear from you this morning. Um, we'll have you on very soon, especially if Chelsea go through. Good, good luck, actually, to your team as well, your former team. We'll speak to you again soon, Mario. Take Thank care, you so mate. much. Brilliant. Um, Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.